the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport, the thrill of victory, and the agony of defeat. The human drama of athletic competition. This is ABC's Wide World of Sports. Brought to you by Lincoln Mercury. Nobody has more kinds of cars or more kinds of people. See them at the sign of the cat. By Goodyear, makers of the custom steel guard radial tire. And by State Farm Mutual. Almost anywhere you live, there's a State Farm agent nearby. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Off to a trip to Asia. Micah Parsons has been all in this offseason. On the field, it's the same approach. Parsons just one of three players since sacks became official in 1982 with 40 sacks and 200 tackles in his first three seasons. Look at the list he joins. Hall of Famers and the late great ones. Reggie White and Derek Thomas. Not many people can wreck the game like Micah. How would you define what a game wrecker is. A game wrecker is a person, the offenses put that circle around you and saying, this is a guy that we have to stop. Back to throw, look at, oh, he's chased. Parsons has got him again. You have to take over the game. You have to make people fear what you are. When I say the name Micah Parsons, What's the first word or thought that comes to your mind? Girl, the brother can run. Parsons covered! Can Parsons run. got him! He can put one foot in front of the other. They put fear in your heart. Flushed out by Parsons, sacked by Parsons. He has to work on a couple other things. Such as? His inside move and his power move. But let me tell you. When he turns that corner and that offensive tackle start leaning, he throws them across like like um, um, a sack of potatoes. I'm amazed um, with some of the moves he makes. Let's go! It's almost like if you got a rubber band and you sort of pulled it back as far as you can, like a bow and arrow, and you just let it go. He did that every play. Is there a play that comes to mind that really defines Micah Parsons as a game wrecker? One play that I saw with Micah, he goes underneath, runs right into the guard, and he beats the guard. And then there's a running back right there. And so he ends up beating the running back and gets a sack. He's hit! He's sacked by Parsons! He lines up inside of a guard, and before they can blink, he's through the hole. And that's what LT did. Yeah, you mind. You mind, baby. And I still don't understand how they can just line up and before they blink an eye, they throw. Hey, baby, let's go out there like a bunch of crazy dogs. Have some fun. I'll take you back to Bill Parcells, and I heard Lawrence Taylor stories every day about how to play, how to play with a tenacity. We always said, turn up the radio and make it as loud as possible. And that's what Lawrence Taylor did. With Micah, he has all the tools. The tools of the Lawrence Taylor a neck to get to the quarterback. If Micah can be consistent this whole year, that's when he gets that Lawrence Taylor factor. Without a doubt, there was no question. Lawrence Taylor changed the way that that position was played. How has Micah Parsons done that for this generation? He's sacked by Parsons. Teams are trying to draft players like Micah. They can play outside, inside, right or left. And so that means that he's already changed the game. The only thing he has to do to seal his legacy is win a Super Bowl. If he can win a Super Bowl, let me tell you, untouchable. Untouchable. Wow. 
when those two legends talk about uh, Micah mm. Parsons and they bring up Lawrence Taylor, my goodness, back here with Mina as well as Sam. Acho, now you just heard them use the word untouchable. If Parsons wins a Super Bowl ring, do you agree with that statement? Not yet. Uh, not yet. The reason why is I go towards, number one, the longevity of what it looks like. You look at a guy like DeMarcus Ware, 12-year NFL career, nine in Dallas, three in Denver, and a Super Bowl. I think about the plays he was able to make, right? Over an extended period of time, and also in the playoffs, too, right? Like, Michael Parsons has shown up in the regular season year after year after year, now start doing it in the playoffs, and maybe that's what they're talking about. Man, you you be the reason why your team wins. Think about Von Miller when he was with the Broncos and him taking that ball from Cam Newton in the Super Bowl. Plays like that are the plays you remember, and so, all those things are elite and electric. I want to see it over a long period of time, a sustained period of time, but also in the postseason when it matters most. Mina, you know, we see the graphic with the impact. What's up, good people and assholes? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys. As well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work i hope everybody's having a great day forgive me for all of you great fans that have been out there over 116,000 of you guys as well as you ladies who have subscribed to the channel i appreciate each and every one of you guys but i want to address one jackass coward right there Mark sacrifices chickens. You know what's funny is, is every single day I put myself out there like a grown ass man. I take shit from people doing what I enjoy doing. And it doesn't matter what I say or what I do. People are going to criticize that have no sense, no decency, no wavels, no wavels. None. You're not even brave enough to put your own damn name out there. You're a whiny little bitch that all you can do is talk about others because you can't do your damn self. I'm amazed at how many people are so butthurt because I ended up doing like a remake of ABC's Wild World of Sports. And if you actually have seen or old enough to actually have seen it, you will have seen a skier, a ski jumper, literally crash and roll off of the jump. That guy who admitted that he was not a great ski jumper was thankful because of that clip that was put on every Saturday on ABC's Wild World of Sports because that clip made him famous. And I am amazed that Eagle fans, the same people who literally watched Michael Irvin break his neck on the field, cheered, are now upset because I put a picture of Jalen Hurts getting up off the field, the agony of defeat after he got sacked by Michael Parsons. You know what? In my day, they used to say sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. And it's amazing how I can get hate from people who are so cowardless. Cowards. You know what? I got no problem with anybody saying to me, but look, look me, look at, look at me, look me in the eyes. At least be man enough to put your name to it. At least be man enough to come to me as opposed to hiding like a little bitch. There you have it. How pathetic must your life be? How pathetic that all you do is live for hate and disrespecting others. Forgive me, everyone else who was here. I just wanted to address the worthless, spineless biatches 
in the world that think that they're big and bad because they can hide behind a keyboard and disrespect others that are actually doing good things in the world. Those who can do, those who can't talk about those who can't.